Hi guys, welcome to the archive. This week I've got a very easy little trick for you to do that takes less than five minutes to put together. And that quick trick is all you need to connect disturbing buggers like these guys to my walls using the same modular accessory system I use to connect pretty much everything else. Even if you don't use my tiles, the system is flexible enough that if you use your own designs or something from another YouTube channel, as long as it's made from foam, chances are you can work the modular accessory system into your existing tiles. So go check out my modular temple video if you want to find out more about that, or if you're new to the channel and you want to see how that system works. You can then either connect them or remove them to have the mini either on the ground or on a wall climbing either up or down. You could even add enough to allow them to crawl sideways across walls. This lets you do so much more with vertical combat and shows exactly where enemies crawling on walls are, as well as where they're headed. Also it creeps the hell out of players, which is always fun. This can also easily be adapted for a range of minis that have a climb speed and gives you some opportunities for some really gribbly moments. I've also shown how to make some special pieces for grappling hooks, climbing equipment and spider climb. Which lets you do some even more interesting scenes where the players are climbing, but they're not alone. Making this work for minis is easier for some than others, especially heavier minis. But with a little work, this trick can work for most large or smaller minis made of pretty much anything but metal. These WizKids phase spiders are a good easy example. With their base attached they're quite heavy, but remove it and they become super lightweight. For these minis I found the brute strength approach of just ripping the base off with my bare hands worked best. It was only glued on a small area. If this doesn't work for you, you could chip away at it with clippers or use a modelling saw instead. Once I'd separated the mini from its base and used some hot water to straighten out its legs, attaching it to the wall is really simple. All I needed to do was drill two holes with a pin vise into its underbelly, both at a 45 degree angle. The first holds the spider climbing up, the other climbing down. When attaching these, I used a wall for each model as a reference piece, making sure the angle would allow for as many legs as possible to connect, which is easier than it sounds when you consider that the legs bend quite easily. It's a good idea to drill each connection hole near the top of the direction the mini will hang from. This means the bulk of the mini's weight rests against the wall rather than pulling out from above, keeping it more stable. Once I had the holes in place, all I needed were some cocktail sticks. The pointy ends are perfect to push into those drilled holes and stay in place. I cut one cocktail stick end for each creature down to about three quarters of an inch long. And I made sure to taper the blunt ends like all of the other accessories that I've shown in the past to avoid damaging the slots internally. From there I just painted them black, but that's literally all you need. The cocktail sticks are a little soft because they're wood, which means even with a less elastic plastic like resin, this method should still work. Even if the cocktail stick got squashed or damaged over time, it's still just a cocktail stick and is pretty easily replaced. You could even attach one to the mini's base if you still wanted to be able to attach a base directly to the mini, which would allow you to connect it when you didn't need it crawling on walls. I'm not going to bother, I think they look creepier without a base and they fill up the squares that they should take up on their own but you can do this if you wanted to. Heavier minis like this carrion crawler are a bit harder, but still possible. The main thing here is getting that base off, which is easier said than done with its little legs glued onto it. This one takes more than just pulling. I needed to clip the base away slowly and carefully with clippers, avoiding the legs. Removing the edges is probably fine to make it light enough to hang from a wall, but I'm not a huge fan of these muddy bases that come attached to WizKids models, so I kept digging. I cut a layer off the bottom with the clippers. And once it was that thin, it was relatively easy to tear the whole thing off. 
This is also a neat little trick if you wanted to mount these WizKids minis on nicer, more scenic bases, instead of the pre-molded plastic ones that they come with. Without its base, the carrion crawler was barely heavier than the spiders, and hung on the wall quite nicely. If you like this video and want to see more, go quickly hit subscribe and the bell to catch me in future. So for PCs and NPCs, the most likely way for them to be climbing walls is either a grappling hook or the spider climb spell or the spider climb slippers. Now, to represent both of these on a wall, you could just use a spare plinth from my 3D combat video, if you want to check that out, which also can be used for other things, like a plinth, um, and give you lots of other 3D terrain options. But if you wanted something a bit more thematic and something that was a bit less obviously stone and also obviously a terrain piece in its own right, you could do something like this. But if you wanted to be really thematic, you could use something more like this. Now I'll give you a close up in a minute, obviously, but what it basically is, is some string textured to look like rope and painted to look like rope, but wrapped around some foam. And it gives a platform that suits the grappling hook aesthetic more than a stone plinth would. Equally, if you were doing a spider climb slippers or somebody used a spider climb spell, you could wrap it in fake spider webs and give much more of an aesthetic feel for that particular player, especially if they're a player who uses that spell a lot. It gives them a real feeling of their character being unique on the tabletop when their commonly used trick is represented so specifically to them. Here, for example, I wrapped string around this piece of foam with a cocktail stick glued in at a 45 degree angle to make a nice thematic platform for a ranger or rogue who likes their grappling hooks. I textured the end of stone before connecting the string with superglue. If your superglue melts foam, which it might, you can do this with tacky glue, it just takes longer to dry. From there I just layered glue on the foam and wrapped the string around until it was completely covered. I quickly realised I didn't need to glue it on every side, just every so often to keep it in place. Something else to bear in mind is if your foam isn't grey like mine, it might be worth painting it with some black and mod podge before this stage. I also added a small loop of wire to the side of the piece so I could show which people were connected to the rope, which is kind of important for climbing equipment. You could do a similar technique with wrapped spiderweb effects for someone who likes to use spider climb, though obviously without the wire loop. Then I just stained the string with some watered down brown wash and painted the stone as I usually would. Check out my painting stone video for more on that if you're interested. And then I just painted the hook in a dark gunmetal with a black wash. For the grappling hook, I wanted to make some kind of accessory that could show where the hook is connected, which could also be quite cool for when the party is climbing up an extended wall. I also plan on using it to show where climbing equipment is connected, which helps give visual feedback in the climbing scenes and easily show players how much trouble they're in as enemies climb towards their connection points and prepare to pull the pin. To do this, I made a hook from wire by bending it back on itself, and then a second piece exactly the same, which I clipped inside the loop at the bottom and super glued together at the top. Before super gluing some string on and wrapping it around to cover it up. Then I just connected a fair amount of string, which can always be piled on the floor, and stained it with some thin down brown wash again, in this case army painter soft tone, and finished the hook off with some army painter plate mail metal and a black wash. I wanted to paint these spiders with a bit of a drow feel, so I decided to paint them as a kind of an homage to one of my favourite spider-based Transformer characters. <laughs> and that's definitely not just me coming up with new ideas for my players. Honest. 
Anyway, the colour scheme I went with was a mix of purples for the main body, black for the legs, some green on the undersides and at the base of the mandibles, and some yellow warning signs on the back of the abdomen. I wanted to get this done quickly and easily, and lacking an airbrush, I decided to just use some contrast paints to see if I could bang out a nice looking scheme quickly and easily. The main abdomen I painted in shish purple and used a large soft flat brush to get some nice smooth strokes on the large flat areas, which seems to be a neat trick to use with contrast paints. You do need to drop it quickly in the water and switch to a second brush for detail while the paint is still wet though, so not the calmest technique. It did give a really nice gradient effect on the contrast paint that I applied though, so I'll be using that one again. I folded up with Dark Angel's Green on the base of the mandibles and legs, and then Black Templar on the legs themselves. None of this was thinned down or mixed with contrast medium in any way, just straight from the pot. Then I just filled in the details, painting the eyes and markings on the underside in Caliban Green to match the Dark Angel's Green. before highlighting the eyes in Warpstone Glow and painting on some kind of horrific pupils facing right at me that I regret terribly. It's a kind of a disturbing thing to hold in your hand. Finally, I painted a pattern on their backs as an homage to the original character I mentioned. The Carrion Crawler was much easier, and again speed painted with contrast. I started with some skeleton horde on his soft looking underbelly. I also painted the inside of his tentacles and mouth with this. I then used that large brush again to get a mostly smooth finish on his outer flesh with Agaros Dunes. Finally, I painted his legs, mandible, antenna, eyes, and the backs of his tentacles with snake bite leather. The result is pretty striking for a three color paint scheme that I finished in less than 15 minutes. I finished up by adding a coat of gloss varnish to the inside of his tentacles and his soft underbelly. And that's how I get my players squirming. It's a neat little trick that takes absolutely minimal effort to do to monsters. And even for player characters, if you're looking to add a bit more of a thematic feel, making one of those little platforms that suits the kind of climbing that they use doesn't take much effort at all either. And it makes that player feel really special. I hope you guys got some good ideas or inspiration to make some more 3D terrain. This stuff is amazing for making combat more interesting and gives you, the DM, a ton more options to make combat more multi-layered. Let me know what you like about this trick or the climbing equipment in the comments. I love getting that feedback from you guys. It is one of the best parts of releasing a video. If you enjoy these ideas and builds that I come out with every week, the best way you can help me be able to keep doing that on an ongoing basis is by joining me in the archive on Patreon. By doing that, you gain access to a monthly live stream where I give patrons previews of upcoming ideas. I give them a vote on which ideas they would like to see next and generally just chill with them and find out how their projects are going. And if they have any questions, see if I can help them. Most importantly though, you'll be helping me provide more free tutorials like this one to help the community. As I've said before, sharing my videos is also amazing and I really appreciate any of you guys who take the time to share this video or any of my others with your friends or in groups. And of course, if you need any tools or supplies for your builds, check out the link in the description where you can find a complete list of everything I use, where I find it, and there's also some Amazon links there, and if you buy from those, you support the channel without it costing you a penny. Thank you guys for watching. I'll be back next week with another build for you guys to enjoy. Until then, I'll be in the archive.